Every good backend developer wants to build the safest APIs possible, or at least I kind of hope. And when it comes to keeping your secrets or connection strings safe, I think we should do everything that we can to make sure they aren't easily accessible. And if we are creating a .NET API, storing hard-coded strings anywhere in the app isn't really the best option, but what is the best option? And at that point, we have to look to the cloud, and in this case, Azure Key Vault. This is an Azure service that provides a safe place to store any connection strings or other secrets. So now let me show you how to add Azure Key Vault to your .NET API and safely store and retrieve your production connection strings. So let's get into it. So I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys the .NET 7 API we're gonna be using for this video. And it is a very simple API, it just has a few endpoints, get teams, get team by ID, add, edit, and delete teams, very basic. Uh, currently we are just connected to our local database which I'm gonna show you guys what data we are actually pulling, and that is this data right here. So we have a uh, right in here, if we open the tables to the sample database, which is the one we're connecting to, we have a confederation table and a teams table. In the teams table, this was themed around the World Cup, so it has a bunch of countries and the confederation they're a part of, and then we're gonna have this confederations table. In my case, how I would need Azure Key Vault is for Azure Key Vault, I wanna store my production connection string in Azure so that it's not locally in my Git, or just in my project hard-coded. I don't want anyone that just sees the project to see the exact connection string for our production database. So I wanna keep that in Key Vault. So I've gone ahead already in Azure and I've created obviously my Azure subscription. I have a resource group and I've gone ahead and created a SQL Server instance and created a version of my sample database in production. So to show you guys that, I've already connected to it here. We see the sample database YT up here, which is the one that I created in Azure. And we have this team table, which the difference is we're only gonna have Ecuador in here. So we're only gonna have one row of data versus in our local, we have all this data here. So with that being said, now let's go ahead and showing you how to actually set up everything that you need in Azure while also setting up what you need in your .NET API. So now that we're back at our project, the first thing that we're gonna need to set up is in our app settings. So in our app settings, what we don't wanna do is just stick a production connection string in here. That is what we are trying to avoid by using Key Vault. But to be able to use Key Vault, we need to have a good amount of information that comes from the Azure portal. So we need to set this up in our JSON. So let's go back in here and we're not gonna add this new section. This new section is gonna be called Key Vault. It's gonna be having the URL to the key vault we're gonna create in a second, a client ID for our application, a client secret for our application, but this could also be a certificate as well, either or if you have a certificate, or in our case, we're just gonna use a secret, and then a directory ID, which basically says that you are authorized to use and have access to this Azure key vault. So now that you have your app settings set up, we're now gonna to need to go to our NuGet package manager, Go in here and we're gonna have to browse for azure.identity should find it here install this and the next one that we're gonna need is gonna be azure security key vault secrets so install that one and then finally microsoft extensions configuration azure key vault so install that one as well and those are gonna be the packages that we're gonna need uh, to make this work and so now that we have our packages, the next thing that we're gonna have to do is go to our program.cs and this is where we're gonna set up our application to unload when we're loading the application uh, and everything that it's gonna need. We need to be able to tell it, hey, use our local connection string when we're kind of in development on our local, but once we're in a production environment, we want to actually go out to Azure Key Vault and grab that production connection that we're gonna be storing out there. So let me set up the program.cs and then we can go to the Azure portal and set everything that we're gonna need up over there. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab this code for our default connection string and I'm gonna move it down. And then we're gonna wrap it in a is development environment because basically we only want it to actually grab our local connection string to our local DB when we are in a development environment, obviously. But the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna get this if statement for what we're gonna do if we are in a production environment. So in here is where we're actually gonna set up everything that we have to do with Azure Key Vault to get our prod connection string from Key Vault. So first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need all that information from app settings that we just set up. So in the app settings, you remember we did this. 
So we're going to be getting those values in the program.cs. So the key value URL, client ID, client secret, and directory ID. Now we can get them all in here, and we're going to need all of these to be able to have one access to key vault, and then also to identify our application that we're going to need to register in Azure. And so that everything just plays nice and allows us access to our connection string. And the next line of code that we're going to need is this client secret credential. This basically allows us to authenticate against the Azure AD with all our information to prove that we are who we say we are and we should have access to the resources that we want. So let me import whatever I need using Azure identity. And basically we are going to need to have our tenant ID or directory ID and client ID and client secret. And don't worry because we're going to get those when we actually start creating everything that we need in Azure portal. Don't worry. Next line that we're going to need here. So now after you have your credential, we're going to need to actually add Azure key vault. So with that, we are going to set default key vault secret manager, and we're going to use all our values to access Azure key vault. So the URL to our key vault, our client ID to the key vault and the secret to the key vault. And once we have that, the next thing that we're going to need to do is now create the actual tool, the client that's actually going to go and retrieve that connection string. So we're going to need to have a secret client pass in the URI to our key vault, as well as that credential that we created to authorize us access to what we want. So we're going to create this client right here. And now the next line is going to be where we set up our connection string correctly with our database. So now we're going to be connected to the actual prod connection string that we're going to be getting from Azure Key Vault. And like I said, if you want to test locally, you would just switch this to that and then you can hit it. Uh, but obviously, when you're going to deploy this to production, you want to make sure that in your production environment, you're able to get this when you deploy your web API to Azure and you're using the correct connection string in Azure because that's where it's important to have. And so now that you have all of this code, this is all the code that we need to make this work. But obviously, we don't have any values here and these values are key. So now let's go ahead and create our Azure Key Vault and then register our application and start filling in all these values that we're going to need to be able to do what we need to do. Now that we're at the Azure portal, let's go ahead and create our key vault. So click key vault, click create. Now make sure right here you have your subscription, your resource group. Now give it a name. So let's do key vault YT and let's do 326 for today's date. Now we're going to do central US and then all of this is good. Uh, this is fine for now. And this is also good. Keep going. And now let's actually create it and I'll be right back once it's done. So now that our key vault has been created, you're going to see that one of the first things that we need in our app settings is here. So we're going to need this vault URL. So we're going to copy that, go back to our project, go to our app settings, and we're going to add that right here. So that's the first thing that we're going to need from here. But now going back here, we're going to go to secrets. We're going to generate one. And this is where we're going to actually put our production connection string. So we're going to name it prod connection and we're going to need our secret value. And now that I've entered my production connection string, we're going to go down here and create it. So this is actually going to create our secret. And this is going to be the prod connection string that we're going to try and access from our um, program.cs right here. So that is the value and secret in Azure Key Vault that we're going to need to grab. But before we can actually go ahead and grab this production connection string from Azure Key Vault, we need to go ahead and register our application so that Azure AD and the Key Vault all know that we have an application that wants to grab these things and we've given it the thumbs up that it is good to go and it is actually authorized to go ahead and do that. So now let's show you how to register your app. So again, you can go home and you can type up here or you can just find it app registrations. So click app registrations and you're going to want to register your application. So I'm just going to call it dot net seven API YT, just like the project. Uh, we're going to do default directory, single tenant. That is fine. Uh, you can go ahead. I'm assuming uh, for companies or different other types of projects, you might want to do any Azure AD or stuff like this. But for mine, we're just doing default directory. Uh, we don't need this. Let's register. And now that we've registered, we're going to see a lot more information. So we're going to see this client ID, this directory ID. And now we're also going to need to create a secret, a client secret. So first of all, let's go ahead and grab this client ID. Let's go put that in our project. 
go back here and this is our client ID and now we're also going to need this directory ID or tenant ID and we're also going to need that in here so now we have three out of the four but we also need to create a client secret for our project so go down here to secrets so this is where i was mentioning where if you have a certificate you can also use that but for my example we're just going to use a secret so create a new client secret so click new client secret and we're going to have to enter a description so we're going to call it my super secret secret and we're just going to do it that it expires in six months so add it so now we're going to need this secret value and you're going to take that secret value and that is going to be the last thing that we are going to need right here and after adding that you may be thinking it's good to go well let's try it so to try and actually grab that connection string let's let me just change this so that it actually hits let's change this to is production just so that we don't have any problems and let's put a breakpoint here so when the application starts uh we can kind of step through it and we can see kind of how things are being pulled so let's begin so we've hit this we should have values for all four of these if we open this up we should see that we're getting values and we should have no issues getting these values now we should be able to get our credential add key vault but wait we have an issue the user group or application with a given app id does not have secrets list permission on key vault so how do we fix this well just because we registered our app that doesn't mean that we told key vault let this specific application use key vault so what we need to do is we need to allow access to our app in key vault so go back to your azure key vault we're going to go to access policies click create select secret management all this is fine click next and then in here we're gonna have to find that app that we just registered so click net seven apiyt this is the app that we just registered so click that and now we are giving it access based on all these permissions that we're doing here and obviously you can do more or less uh, but we just need the secrets so click next we have our app click ahead review and create and boom we should now have access so now if we go back in here this should now work and we should be able to step all the way through this and i can show you guys that we now are accessing azure key vault and getting this production connection string but right before i show you proof that everything that we've done in this video actually works and we are able to get this connection string from azure key vault if this video has been helpful to you please drop a like on it so it can spread to many other developers on youtube thank you so now let's do the final test and see if after registering our application creating the key vault and setting everything up in here as well in our app settings everything works so now let's start it step through all of this should be the same but now we should actually be able to step through here and then create our client and if you see our client was created successfully with the url to our key vault and now we should be able to step through and actually get this value since we didn't get any errors and how do we know that well if we go through and now our api is going to load and if we do get teams what do you guys remember that we had in our azure database and that is that we had just one team which was ecuador so if i do get teams we should just get one back so let's go back try this out execute and as you can see, we are just getting Ecuador back, which means we are in our production database. And if I switch this back, just to show you guys that we are actually doing the thing that I said, if we go back here, now we are not gonna be in a production environment. We're gonna be in development. And if we step through and actually start this, we're gonna see that now we are getting all that other data. So when I try this out, we should be able to get everything that is right here. So we're gonna see that we're getting a big list of countries, which goes show you that we are actually in here going to the Azure Key Vault and going and getting that production string that is now not stored here. So with all that being said, that is how you actually set this up in your .NET 7 API. So you can use Azure Key Vault for your connection strings or whatever other secrets that you need to use. And so you're using Azure Key Vault with your API. But now, how do you actually host your API in Azure 
so you can then use all of this in an actual production environment? Well, go ahead and watch this video right here.